Hey, he geeks are Ali here. Thanks for joining me today. We've got a bit of a different video going on for you today. Um, I'm, I'll kind of touch on what's been going on for the last two weeks or so uh, in a little bit here, but I kind of thought we'd get started with something real basic. Um, you guys have watched me play Atlas probably for the last couple of videos. Uh, I've been playing on the, the North American PvP server with the Titans. It's been a lot of fun. Um, not all of the geeks are PvP guys, and uh, I'm not 100% either. I like to build. You guys know we have our own private setup for the geek servers, which is all done through our Patreon, uh, and it's uh, hosted by um, G Portal. So they've been amazing. They've really made things work for us, um, and I thought I'd show you guys today two things. First, the basics of setting up your own G Portal Atlas server. Uh, and the second, I'll show you a bit of what I've been working on for the last week and a half. Um, so the first thing we do is just the basics. This is G Portal's interface. I created a new server. I set some slots up uh, for it at 60 slots. Okay, 60 slots is enough for you to get two a two by two grid, and then each of those four servers would have 15 slots when it's all done. Um, so it's not crazy big. It should be enough for smaller companies or smaller communities to kind of play on and enjoy, and give you a lot of cool options for it. So I want to give you kind of an option you can work with. It's not ridiculous expensive. Um, G Portal is really fantastic. They charge a really good fee for what they do for slots. And the really cool thing with them is you're always able to change how many slots you work with. So you can adjust up and down how many slots you're working on and it lets you just cross the board. So if you have like a server, like an ARC server that you're not getting as much play on, um, you can actually adjust that slot count down and then use those slots for something else. So we've done that here. We've adjusted a couple of our ARC servers to give us room to work on the Atlas stuff. So what I've done is you get the, the first server set up with the number of slots you want. So I did 60, and then you add expansion servers. So I added three, so we'll have four all together. Uh, each of these will divide out to 15 apiece as they go. This will change two once we get to the next point. I'm going to go ahead and stop this one because it should be off for what we're about to do. Um, you'll see at the very top here, we've got a couple options. So we've got uh, the overview, which is this page here. And then we've got maps, mods, map upload, and archon. So we're going to go to maps first. Uh, and I'll show you kind of what you can pick from. Uh, so there's different pre-done sizes. Right now, this is a 3x3. Three three. This is eventually, we're going to set up something like this for the geeks. Um, but that's the other piece I was talking about. But in here, you can see they've got options. So you could do a 1x1, one one, which has... Oh, I actually have to pick my servers because I've already started this process. So I'll show you that in a second. Uh, so we're going to actually switch this to... Uh, we want to do... A two by two. We're going to pick Pirates and Buccaneers. This is the one that I actually was looking at originally, but uh, G Portal gave us a couple more slots for it. Well, a lot more slots to work with. So we're going to set this for A1 because that's our free port. So this is our main server. I just like to make sure the main one is kind of that the, the free port server to make it the, the first one people log into. And then these other ones we can kind of set how we want to. So at this point, I'm just going to kind of do them backwards because I can. So now we've set those, we've picked our map. And we can click submit here. We're going to accept the changes. And then we'll go back in just a second. I'll show you some of the other maps. We just kind of have this first one has to get started up for us to kind of come back and play with some of this stuff. Okay, so now we should be able to go through and look. If we did like a one by one. <laughs> I might not be able to show you this because I've already got it set for four servers. Uh, so let me just show you this then. They've got it set up for they have a just a single server that has all the biomes in it and it's just got a cool stuff in it. They've got one that's got snow and mountains. They've got one that's just desert. They've got two by one, which makes your maps look a little weird. So I'd be a little careful with that if you can avoid it. And then they've got three two by twos. So they've got one that's all biomes. Uh, this should let us show you those. So these are all biomes. And they have kind of the ice path in the middle. Then they've got one that's uh, all biomes and they have all the ice in a different spot. So on this guy, the ice is kind of across the bottom. And what they've done with this with all biomes is each of these islands kind of covers all of the basics of what you need. I've gone through all three of these and I think that this is the most fun one to kind of mess with. And it still has, uh, I think it has all of the biome stuff in it. So we've got everything already saved for that. We're going to go back to our cluster overview. And then from here, you can see the red down here, right? And they're saying that you have to restart the expansion game servers because they're highlighted in red. Uh, so if you try to just start them now, it's not going to work because it's going to tell you that you have to set your basic settings. So we're going to go in here. 
this is the their basic setup for this it makes this really easy you've got your ip address and uh you, you've got all of your ftp stuff if you want to change anything for it now this server won't be here anymore once <laughs> once we're done so uh, i'm going to delete this out and start a new server uh but then you can go so we do the basic settings here and then in here this is the g portal interface for a lot of this stuff you have a lot of cool things you can work with here right so if we wanted to go ahead and add mods we could add them um, at that main screen we're at we can actually add mods and we'll have them here and you you'd select them to be available you've got your basic like your name over here your admin password server password if you need if you want to actually lock everything out battle eye turn on and off map location uh you can do when it saves uh, if you want admin commands to show up in chat you can do that here uh, difficulty offset, I'm assuming is similar to arc that if you turn it up, it's going to make the creatures uh, level at a different, there'll be different levels. So like most of the stuff we have for the geeks is set for six for the offset and that makes 180 our max. I'm not sure if that's the same here because I haven't touched any of that with these guys yet. Um, the daytime speed scale and the nighttime speed scale, so you can set, I almost always change ours to about half speed scale uh, for the daytime. It just kind of slows it down. And we have more daytime than nighttime. You can set full PVE. Uh, if you don't want to do that, you can actually set up a little farther down. You can leave it PVP, but set PVE time frames, which is pretty neat. Um, you've got a setting so you can make it whether creatures or players can actually be on top of other ships or not. They aren't owned by them. Uh, the dino count multiplier. You want to adjust this up or down to adjust how many dinos you have there. This is the timer. So you can, they'll have little descriptions to kind of tell you how it all works, but you can actually set it up so your server is PVE for a certain amount of time. Then the timer will stop and it'll go to PVP. So like if you wanted to have weekends be PVP, you could set that up with uh, to be, you know, PVE all week long. And then Friday night at midnight, you could turn on PVP and the whole weekend would run PVP for you. Uh, friendly fire, gold multiplier. You've got your... Uh, you can actually set static age, which means you do not have dynamic aging. You cannot use claim flags, which puts you back to more of an arc style build. Uh, when you do that, you'll have to adjust your player, uh, your enemy prevention radius. That's going to be how close an enemy structure can be to uh, whatever you have down. And you can also activate fountains of youth. Um, down here is kind of the meat of it, right? So you got your third person, your health bars can turn on, you can do your PvP structure decay. Uh, this is where you get to adjust your harvest amount, multiplier, your stamina and water drain, or, or your food and water drain. You can change uh, how much the harvest health is. That's how many swings of an axe it takes to get to what you need for it. Uh, but there's a ton of stuff down here to change out. Taming speed multiplier. And we haven't even messed with this stuff yet. I'm kind of throwing numbers in that we typically use to see how it turns out. Uh, but you've got gamma stuff down here too it's pretty cool you've got a lot of options down here for all that you can adjust this to your whatever you like that being said anytime you make a map change on the map site on the map page that we're on all of this goes away <laughs> and you'll have to redo it again so just be wary don't set this stuff in stone until you get to that point that you're ready for it okay so um we didn't actually change anything. We're just going to do a quick save because you need to do a basic save for it. And that's what would let us get the server started. Before we switch back to that part, though, I'm going to show you the other settings you have here. So you've got engine settings. So these are the real basic things you want to pay attention to, right? So you've got your base level stat multipliers for the player. You've got that. Um, this is the one you actually do the multipliers for it. So like a as you get levels, that's what changes that. Same thing for dinos, wild and tamed. Okay. We also have our configuration files. This is where you actually get the raw INI files. So you can see your game INI and your game user settings. This is just like ARC. When you click on one of those and load it up, it's going to give you all your basic stuff down here for you that you can kind of work through and change things. So this is where a lot of us have been learning what's in the game or not in the game right now to make things work for us. All right. That's the basics, right? There's a lot of stuff you can change. There's a lot of cool things you can do with it. You can see now that we're at a point that everything is red. We're going to want to go ahead and start this first server up. It's going to do its update to kind of, a, it's going to push all the things that we might have changed into that file now and get everything rolling for us to get it started. Now that that's starting, I can start the other ones. They're going to all do their update as well. And we'll be good to go on that part. So these will all kind of disappear as we go. While that's loading up, I'll show you that you can go to map, uh, mods here. This is where you could take any of the current mods. So like our buddy Eco, she just put out her, uh, 
she just put out her new foliage fo fo okay the word there <laughs> for it so you can uh you can click add here and it'll just add it to the mods you'll have to restart the cluster for it to actually add and you can activate it into it but so this is really easy to add mods you just click them right over you've got links directly to the workshop so you can see it you can see when the last updates are to make it really easy to do your um your stuff on the back side Okay, so that's the basics for this. This last one here is what we'll be working on <laughs> that I've been working on. And I'll show you some of that once we get to it. But So everything is online here now. I'm going to actually uh, pause the recording for a second and I'm going to switch over and log into this server so you guys can see uh, kind of what this looks like. And we'll use a quick admin command to kind of get up and about and show you what's going on. So hang out with me. I'll be back in just a minute, okay? All right, guys, you can see what this looks like. This is the map we already put in there. A1 is going to be set for our free port. I'm going to go ahead and just do a quick join. I did actually put a password on it. So we'll get that rolling real quick. We're going to join into the server. We'll kind of play from here. What I'm going to actually do is kind of just take you for a quick tour with some of the admin stuff and show you the basics of what uh, I kind of learned as we first started this. Uh, it doesn't actually go ahead and load. We got a preset. Let's call this guy Dude. Dude Man Guy. Perfect. And you go, buddy. Alright, be wary. This music is usually pretty loud. <laughs> okay. Super loud music as we start. Oh my gosh. Okay. We are in one of their port cities here. It's in the free ports. You can see we've got all the normal stuff. We've got Kurt Russell that's missing the side of his face. And then we've got our vendor down here. Bam. All right, guys, that's the basics. You've now seen how to actually go through and create your own server cluster for Atlas. We did a two by two. You can put any slot count you want with any amount of servers you want as long as it's a square. Okay, um, part one is done. If that's all you guys want to see was the basics, thanks for watching. Have a great day, and I'll catch you later. If you want to see the rest of it, hang out, because here we go. <laughs> so, uh, knowing that we could actually do our own map uploads here, um, <laughs> I kind of want to do my own. I want to set my own thing up. So that kind of sent me down a rabbit hole. When Grape Shop first brought this game out, they also set up a map editor that people could use to make their own the, there's the same tool they use to make the, the map. So you can go to uh, github.com slash grapeshot game slash server grid editor. You can just go ahead and download the most like the, the most updated version. Looks like I actually have a new version I need to download because there's a crash fix, which I didn't do yet. So I'll probably download a new one of these today and get going. From there, it's a lot of coding and a lot of physical stuff you can move around. To learn how to do some of that, uh, one of my patrons actually linked a uh, YouTuber that's already gone through and done all of the hard work to get you started. It's definitely worth watching. I'm going to show you right here. It is 64 Gaming is the uh, it's the channel. So search for 64 Gaming and he has an entire thing about getting started with the map editor. He's got uh, four or five videos of that and there's a whole thing about Power Stones. Start at the beginning watch through the end it's what i've been going through to work on right now i'll show you behind here is the server i've been working on okay so right now we're working on doing uh three by three for the geeks now i've been kind of placing i've probably overloaded these a little bit i'm, I'm kind of playing with the idea to see how it works right now uh, but I've gone through all of the stuff so far with him as I've kind of been watching to kind of get some basics and understand how it all works. And I've been pulling things in. Now, the biggest challenge that we have making our own server grid is we want to make sure that we have all the resources that you need. So in Atlas, you have this thing where you have to be able to have, like for the best blueprints, you might have to have six different versions of wood to make that work, right? So you'd have to have... 200 oak, 200 strong wood, 200 aged wood. Like you have to have all the different variants of that wood. Now you can use some gold and some material at the vendors, the NPC vendors and the free ports to do some of that. Uh, but we want to try to make it organic so you can get it all at the same time. So that, 
that leads to the other part. I'm going to show you guys one of the spreadsheets I've been working with here. Let's pull this back over. This was set up uh, originally by uh, Nettle. Uh, and what this is is the toolkit that they've been working on uh, with different sections. So right now they've got the Polar Tundra Guides at 90%, Deserts at 15, Temperance at 10, Equatorial and Tropical is at 35. We're in Equatorial and Tropical here. So the way this works, down here at the bottom, they have actually got the different maps. So these are the the codes that they use for the islands down here and they actually have a lot of these have images of the island itself and then you've got the different fibers that it has right so we know that like if we go here we'll have pure iron and we'll have traces of cobalt right so this is all the different stuff that'll be on this specific island so what's beneficial to that is that when i'm trying to build grids that have everything in it i can go here and look at that okay so what I have now, this is my layout of what I've been working with, the ideas of what I wanted to work with. So like tropical over here, this is my A1. My tropical, we've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six islands, right? So if we click on tropical A1 here, this will take me to the actual, I've been taking stuff off of that list as we've gone. So you'll see like this top one says PVE. Every one of these has a PVE island in it right now. Those PVE islands are where you find your power stones and where you'll find the fountain of youth. Um, so if you want to, if we want to make this a full experience on a small scale, nine by nine is about the smallest you can get to have one of these uh, PVE things in every server. So these are the the Golden Age Ruin Islands. So I've got one of those for each of these grids. The center will eventually be the Maw, where we have the Kraken in there. I have to set up a ghost ship route that goes around here too. Uh, but this is how we kind of get all of those in there. So what I've been trying to do is actually kind of work with uh, you know, specific zones, right? So I'm gonna have my tundra and polar up here. My desert will be down here. So I'm already working on the desert in this section here. So what we end up doing though, is we'll go to this and I've been going through each one of these. <laughs> I've been looking to try to find ones that will carry the most amount of variety and to make sure that I have overlaps where I need to and that I cover everything I can. So if we go to ours again for tropical, A1, you can see that wood, I've got wet wood, strong wood, and I've got aged wood in here, right? So that's, I've got three of the main woods that I have to have, right? For thatch, I've got rushes, fronds, bark. So I've got three different ones there as well. You can see we've got slate, granite, co 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 coquina, uh, and limestone. So I've got four of those guys. So what we're trying to do is get as many things on here for each for the grids as we can to make sure we're covering all of the basic requirements we need across the entire map. So as we're trying to build things, we know that we'll have access to that material someplace in the map. So like this one, I've got emerald and opal for gems. I've got rubies in some of these other ones. We've got sugarcane, nectar, and honey. Uh, and gum across all of these guys. We've got different types of coal. We've got different types of oil uh, that's in this stuff. So this is what I've been working on for the last for the last two weeks i've been going through and making i've been starting on this process so mostly i had been going through these to try to find things that i thought would work and i just started working with the editor after watching uh the the, uh, the 64 gaming tutorials i've been kind of watching these and picking this up this is going to take a while because once i get this in i still have to actually do a bunch of the physical coding to put power stones in to put a route for the ghost ship and to put all the, the, the mon stuff in so there's a lot of work to make this happen so those pre-done things that we saw over on G Portal, the fact that they went through and made all these pre-done things is amazing <laughs> to make that work the way you want to. So they've done a really good job of kind of giving you all those options out there, which is great. Um, so the way this kind of works, though, if you look at this here, so say we liked this. Well, this is one of the PVE maps, right? So this, uh, this shows all the stuff that's on there. If we wanted to put this in specifically, we'd want K underscore C underscore E E P V E. Okay. So if we go over here on the right hand side, we'll scroll all the way to the top, and you can actually see these ones or things I have on there right now. But we want K C E E P V E, right? I already have that one in here. Uh, but essentially, what you do is you just click it and drag it into the map. Okay. So there's a whole section in the tutorials from 64 Gaming to kind of walk you through this, but you know you can you can rotate them, um, you can drag them where you want, and then you can actually do some other stuff where you set the power stones and that kind of stuff on the islands as well. 
once that's all done, then you do trade ship routes and all the other stuff as well. So <laughs> this has been my life. <laughs> so normally this last week of January is when I take off an entire week for gaming. I usually would play new video games. Uh, like I just bought uh, Smash Brothers for uh, the Switch. I usually I'd be, you know, I played a little bit of that. I'd finish up games I haven't finished, uh, like Breath of the Wild on the Switch. I haven't finished that. I'm working on that right now. I'd play, you know, I'd play big games uh, with people that I haven't played. My family used to play Black Ops, so, used to, so we would play Black Ops. We'd play Cards Against Humanity. I'd host gaming tournaments, stream a bunch, record a bunch. That's usually what my last week of January is. <laughs> It hasn't happened this week. I've been so engrossed in the idea of us making our own map uh, that this is what I've spent my time on, is learning how to do this, logging into PvP official when we have, you know, raids and stuff going or have to deal with raids happening to us. But this has been what I've been working on for the last week. So if you guys see stuff out there like this, great. When I get done with this, if it all works, I'm going to put it someplace so people can use it themselves if they want. Heck, I'll probably put it on this video once it's done. Uh, but that's how this works this is a crazy crazy thing to give you the option of making your own atlas map so like grapeshot say what you want about how this game has been working and the issues that have come with it but grapeshot has given us a place and a way to make our own game they've made it so we can make our own way to play think about all the great mods that we've gotten for Ark, like the Ragnarok map was amazing as a mod. They got turned into an actual map, but you can customize your own experience with the grid editor. It's amazing what we have options to do now. So thank you for watching. <laughs> this is, I know it's a different video than I kind of usually do. I just wanted to give you guys a basic idea of what we're working on here. Monkey Puzzle and I are kind of starting to work on this together. I've been sharing stuff with him. I think he's going to start streaming, doing some of the same work that we've been working on here to kind of see how that works. We're going to make saves of this, and he's going to try it and mess with it too. So there's more to come. Hopefully we'll have this amazing server at the end that has all the cool stuff on it and a little 3x3 three three grid that'll give you the chance to play and explore a lot of cool places. Uh, and like for us, uh, the geeks at Iron Mind community will be working together for that. Uh, once that's up and running, if you guys want to join us, it's patreon.com slash the geek. Uh, Monkey Puzzle's got his own. So does UTC. All those are options once we get this up and running. If you want to come join us on something like this, uh, we are going to shoot for a PVP PVE mix. We haven't quite nailed down the rules yet, but we're working through that with the communities right now. Uh, and that's going to be some place we'll eventually move once we're off of PVP official. So a little work left to go on that, but just know that it's coming. I hope you guys enjoyed. I know this is a long, weird video for me <laughs> i don't usually do stuff like this but g portal has been amazing to give us the slots for it they've made a really easy way to get in and just start working with this and start playing the way you want with these pre-done maps so you know shout out to those guys for taking care of the business for that kind of stuff there's always a link in the description if you guys want to get a discount when you want to sign up for servers uh always there always helps us too of course if you've enjoyed the video drop a like below you can always subscribe for more content and i will catch you guys on the flip side i'll catch you in the seas on pvp official <laughs> come say hi i'll come find you it'll be a great time there's so much ahead of us in this game i'm just excited <laughs> all right guys catch you on the flip side